Hi YouTube, this is Ty, and welcome to the Test of a Ty channel. Let's jump on into the video. You see what this one's called. Quickly, before we get into the Teddy Pendergrass video, I want to do a quick um, three shouts out. One to Rachika Conyers, aka College Girl, we call her here on this channel, for getting her comment pinned on my Al Green video. And two, uh, to Donna Brooks, who requested this video that you're about to watch right now on that same Al Green video. And three, to Mo Von R for letting me know that she's a new subby to this channel, also on that Al Green video. And four, to all of you who watched and shared and subscribed based on that Al Green video. I had a lot of Facebook shares and likes on that one uh, that day. And when uh, this, just two days ago, for two weeks, that video had been up at about 200 views. And then all of a sudden, it shot to over 2,000 views in two days, um, just, you know, since yesterday. So thank you all. Shout out to you all. So the night that Teddy Pendergrass got into the big car accident, and this is from his passenger's point of view, the late soul singer, Teddy Pendergrass, was at the height of his career when he slammed his Rolls Royce into a tree on March 18th. 1982 in the East Falls section of Philadelphia on Lincoln Drive. He reportedly lost control of the vehicle as no other car was involved in the crash. Uh, Pendergrass and his passenger, Tanika Watson, were trapped in the wreckage for 45 minutes. She was a nightclub performer, aspiring model, and born a man. She was a post-op transgender woman back in 1982. Uh, Watson walked away from the accident with minor injuries while Teddy Pendergrass suffered a spinal cord injury that left him paralyzed from the chest down. Initially, there was much speculation about the details surrounding the accident, but Pendergrass remained focused on his recovery and Watson had kept quiet um, for about 30 years since that accident until a 2014 interview with Oprah, Where Are They Now?, when she finally opened up about her side of the story. Like many Teddy Pendergrass fans, Watson was a fan of that very fine man and charismatic artist. And back then, Watson was a sex worker who lived near the music studio where Teddy Pendergrass recorded a lot of his songs. So one day she met him walking down the street and okay, well, here's what she had to say. I haven't really got a chance to tell my side of things, and um, it was important to me. It's very important to me. Teddy was a big star. I know my family loved him. His music was always playing. You couldn't get any bigger than he was. And he was a very handsome man. I must say, he was very handsome. I met Teddy in the seventies. I was coming down the street where I lived. It was close to um, the studio where he recorded. And he called me over to his car, and it was a Rolls Royce. I thought he was a pimp because I wasn't used to people really having Rolls Royces. So that was the first time when I ran from him. I went over and spoke to him, said hi, and I said, I just wanted to speak to you. He said, okay, and I said, I'm leaving because I have to get up early tomorrow. He said, well, I'm getting ready to leave too. Would you like a ride home? So I said, sure. So we proceeded to go to his car and drove away. And that's when the accident happened. First, the car started speeding up really fast. And I was wondering, was he driving fast? But he wasn't. It was out of control. And I noticed he was struggling with the wheel. And all of a sudden, I heard this great big bang Next thing I know, the press was there, and I got into the ambulance with him, and I helped him as much as I could. I had contusions from the impact, and I had a chipped tooth, which is nothing compared to him. I didn't find out Teddy was paralyzed until it got in the paper. You know? I tried to reach out to him right after the accident. I went to the hospital where he was, and there was a woman there, and she said, well, you're not going to see him before his son does. And she caused this big scene and I just. So I cut her off. I'm working with this editor for the first time, hoping that I'm bringing you all some good content. So here's the thing. 
Um, recall that she said, the next thing I know after the accident, the press was there. She says that the press was there. Notice she said the press, not the paramedics was there or not even the police was there. And I just wanted to kind of point that out in an age before social media where, you know, someone might have seen on the street and then tweeted a picture or, you know, went Facebook live to say, hey, yo, here's, you know, Teddy Pendergrass, that, you know, that should kind of give some insight as to just how big of a star he was for people who might be too young to know, or even who might be too old to remember. So anyway, soon after that accident, um, Watson, she did try to reach out to Teddy Pendergrass, but she was unsuccessful. And two days after the accident, the news broke of Watson's sordid past and her sexual reassignment surgery that she had had five years prior. So that would have been 1977. And that to me is surprising that there would have been a transgender woman who'd had a surgery back in 1977. And I don't know how long it's been going on, but apparently forever, but just that's surprising for me. Um, she said, uh, quote, I don't think Teddy knew about my transition at all, um, nor did she think that he knew of her multiple arrests for prostitution. Uh, she said, quote, the hardest thing for me to read um, was for them to insinuate that there was a sex act going on. There wasn't. And she's saying that because almost immediately after the story broke, there were rumors swirling that she was performing oral sex on Teddy Pendergrass when he crashed his car and that that's actually what made him crash his car. And to this day, there are still rumors online that the police discovered Teddy Pendergrass with his pants around his ankles and her head in his lap. Now, I'm not saying that that's not true, but I will say that I have not seen a credible source that supports those details. I know that it's fun for people to believe, though, and that's probably why and how those rumors got started in the first place. Um, so anyway, all those rumors and that negative media attention caused Watson to be dropped from her modeling agency before her career could even get off the ground. Uh, she was forced back into sex work to support herself, and she also became addicted to drugs. Uh, quote, she, the doctor gave me Valium, and the Valium made me feel like I could deal with things better. I got hooked on them, she admitted, and she says I became strung out on drugs later. So in 2002, she finally got her chance to meet up with Teddy Pendergrass. She said, quote, someone called me that knew Teddy's mother, and they said, Tanika, you have to get here quick because Teddy's mother wants to see you, she says. And then she said, uh, so I got myself together and went to where his mother was. And she said, uh, if you want to see Teddy, he's out in the car. And so when Watson and uh, Tanika Watson and Teddy Pendergrass finally came face to face for the first time in three decades, she says that they didn't have much to say to each other, uh, but it was the closure that I needed. That's what she said. And uh, she ended up writing a book um, and uh, I'll put the, the uh, title of her book. I think it's called My Life is Not an Accident, but I'll put that on the screen for you. And uh, she said, quote, I had been through a lot and I'm sure he had too. I was clean and sober and I had me back and I had my strength back. So uh, that is the story from her point of view. I obviously wish that I could get Teddy Pendergrass's point of view, but unfortunately he passed away in 2010 from complications related to colon cancer. Um, so that's all that I have for this story. I know that a lot of people have heard a lot of things for a lot of years about it. So if you have more to add to this story, please put it down in the comment section. Let's get a discussion going. If you like this video, please hit me with a thumbs up. Uh, like I said, let's get a discussion going. Let's get the comment section lit up um, and uh, share on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really does help me. And if you like this kind of video, we can talk about this kind of stuff and more anytime if you just hit that subscribe button and I'll be back and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for being here. Bye-bye.